It's about the, uh, the the composition of the the permanent uh, five members uh, in the United Nations Security Council. Uh, the current uh, f five nations of, uh, who are members of the United Nations uh, Security Council, like permanent members are United States, the United Kingdom, the France, uh, and Russia, uh, and also uh, China. So soon after the World War uh, Two ended. Uh, United States, the United Kingdom, uh, France and Russia were given uh, permanent uh, membership of the United Nations Security Council with the veto powers. That means uh, veto power refers to the uh, such a uh, extraordinary power where if any one of the such veto powered countries oppose, a resolution cannot uh, go through the United Nations Security Council. Uh, so uh, subsequently, uh, China was also given uh, uh, its entry into the United Nations Security Council as a uh, permanent member uh, with veto power, especially because of its uh, uh, contribution uh, to the long-standing fight against aggression. The China's uh, role was uh, recognized, even though China was not a party to the Second World War. Uh, so, similarly, uh, I think the, the permanent membership of the uh, Security Council must be expanded. What matters is the permanent membership and not really the uh, the the non-permanent members from different regions, whether it's South Africa or uh, South America or Middle East. So in this regard, in recognition of uh, Sri Lanka's uh, long uh, fight uh, from independence, uh, the 1948 onwards, and which escalated into a, a huge war uh, in 1970s, uh, mid-1970s with the formation of the Liberation Tigers of the Tamil Leelam and the war ending uh, on uh, 18th May 2009 in, in recognition of the uh, the long aggression against the terrorism really uh, I think Sri Lanka must be given uh, a permanent membership uh, into the United Nations Security Council's current uh, uh, group of uh, five members uh, Sri Lanka must be included as a permanent member because once you you know, in the terrorism, there is obviously a, a threat uh, to such a nation uh, because uh, because of the Sri Lanka's role uh, in ending terrorism. Uh, you know, uh, my advice to the army was that uh, soon after the 9/11 attacks in uh, uh, United States, uh, I promoted uh, actually I, I supported the Sri Lanka army hierarchy to go forward uh, with a, sim a solution to end the terrorism in a in a meaningful way uh, with war and uh, but uh, however we, since uh, president george bush junior who uh, who actually supported uh, uh, like a global voice against terrorism since his term ended in 2008 uh, we had a problem because because of his actions, President George Bush only uh, once America was under attack uh, by Al Qaeda terrorists, only the America and the Europe and the United Kingdom and its allies like uh, Canada realized the, the gravity of uh, terrorism. Because up to that time, up to 9 11, uh, no other countries, like the, especially the Western bloc, never realized the importance of getting rid of terrorism. But soon after the 9 11, since uh, the President George Bush Jr. took it up, then Sri Lanka also uh, got a golden opportunity of uh, uh, to eradicate terrorism, which Sri Lanka successfully did uh, in 2009, May 18th. So, however, uh, there was a risk that uh, the U.S. policy may change after the ending of the second term of uh, President George Bush uh, Jr. in 2008. Uh, so, uh, because of that, I asked the Sri Lanka army to expedite the war and somehow end the terrorism before President George Bush. Uh, second term ended in 2008, but it uh, took a little bit more time till, uh, due to humanitarian reasons to accommodate the uh, innocent Tamil people's lives. It expanded till 2009, uh, May 19th. So anyway, uh, by the time the U.S. saw a policy shift with the President Barack Obama's election in 2009, by that time, however, uh, Sri Lanka managed to finish the war. So I think uh, now looking into this matter and also the Taliban, uh, the terrorism had ended and uh, United States uh, President Joe, Joe Biden himself declaring that there are no war involvements for United States anywhere in the world, I think in recognition of this and even to prevent like another country uh, taking advantage of this situation and having a, another type of a terrorism in the United States again. Uh, 
I think in that regard, it's important to give a permanent membership uh, a status to Sri Lanka because we can see the COVID-19, even though it's due, uh, we are not sure whether COVID-19 is a biological weapon or a normal like a uh, like a negligent act of a scientist but still any other country can take advantage of the, that situation to you know to uh, like a, to carry forward another war uh, since the united states have declared that it had no involvement in war anywhere else in the war in the world another country can take war into united states in that case it's important to have uh, sri lanka as a, a permanent uh, member of the united nations security council so that uh, i think with with such six uh, members with china sri lanka united kingdom united states france and Russia, I think uh, this this uh, the whole process can be taken forward uh, where uh, any uh, type of terrorism, whether it's biological or any other space terrorism, even in future any other type of uh, space terrorism can also be prevented if uh, uh, Sri Lanka is given uh, access to the United Nations Security uh, Council as a permanent member. Uh, because it's not so important to allocate uh, the membership according to the, uh, you know, the basis of the reg world regions, whether it's South Africa or South America or Middle East. What matters is they are, you know, real. Uh, whether the country has proven uh, its uh, a major role in the international affairs since ending of the World War Two, Russia, uh, United States, United Kingdom, France uh, played the major role. So accordingly, they were given the membership of the permanent. Uh, Council of the United Nations Security Council, but China, on the other hand, uh, had also done its role separately as against uh, aggression, it played a key role. So similarly, uh, Sri Lanka has also played a significant role in curtailing terrorism and also to uh, in any further evolution of terrorism into biological terrorism or space terrorism, it's important to give Sri Lanka uh, a seat in the permanent uh, uh, membership group of the United Nations Security Council. That is why in 2010, through my YouTube, I have requested this and said that Sri Lanka must be accommodated in the United Nations Security Council, but that did not happen. And we can see subsequently the COVID-19, With we are not sure whether it's a biological terrorism weapon or uh, whether it's a negligent act of a scientist, but still, it cost so many lives around the world, especially in United States with more than 600,000 lives. So, so now, in order to stop that and also to prevent further escalation into a space terrorism, it's important that uh, uh, Sri Lanka uh, is given the membership of the Security Council of the uh, United Nations uh, as a permanent member because we can see U United Arab Emirates uh, getting uh, involved into space mission. So there's a possibility that uh, radical extremist Muslim groups uh, get into the space terrorism. So in order to prevent that, it's important that Sri Lanka is accommodated as a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council uh, through a resolution in uh, this uh, 76th United Nations General Assembly uh, itself.